Bodhi is a singer-songwriter who's released 26 and counting songs. In this video, we discussed his songwriting process. I should be sleeping, but I am in the middle of writing such a cool song. Placing second place on the popular TV show, The Voice. Doing The Voice and like doing things where I'm like under the public eye and like having to move correctly. Like I don't look it, but I'm freaking out. Social media and the highs and lows of being an artist. Such a crazy world because you could have the best song in the world and push it on, on online and you know maybe it doesn't do as well as you'd like. This is what I needed when I was starting my music career. This is the Logan Alexandra Show. Hi Bodie. What's up? Hi, I'm excited to be sitting down with you today. Um, I have been an admirer of you for a long time. I don't think we've ever met in person though. That's crazy. We I have feel like, like we have, but you're right. I know, we have mutual friends and now you're a huge star. And so I'm honored to be sitting with you today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So talk to me about your new song. When's it coming out? What's it about? Give me the whole lowdown. New song, February 10th, called Love and Look Easy. Um, really excited about this song it's the first song i'm putting out since coming off of the show the voice and self-produced wrote it with a couple friends of mine and um it honestly it's the, one of the first songs that i've written that really is kind of telling a part of the story of me and my wife and so it's kind of a, a fun way to start this new chapter of my my music journey um just kind of honoring my wife and the song hits really hard i'm excited self-produced that's something that i didn't know you produce a lot of your own music and do it all wet at home yeah yeah so I have a one of the bedrooms in our home is my studio and it's it's uh where I spend most of my time these days and um something that I've really worked hard to get to a point where I could produce my own music and actually be happy with what I'm making and not have to rely on other people to produce it with me and so um yes a lot of my music I do have other people produce but I wanted to challenge myself with this project to produce it myself so I did What's the vibe of this song? How is it different from like what you've been releasing? Yeah, I a lot more guitars. I'm going more of like the alternative rock guitar vibe, but still have a lot of the hip hop um, drum element and bass elements that uh, my old music has. So it, it kind of it's a little bit more of a fresher take on some of my um, my normal sound with a with a newer sound to it as well. Yeah. Cool. I'm excited to hear it. Thanks. It's actually out now whenever this video comes oh, out. Oh, sick. So go listen to I it. I hope you guys love my song. Yeah, it's out. And live video is probably out. Yeah. I hope you guys watched my live video performing. I, I shot a video uh, with my band playing the song live, and it was a lot of fun to make. Mm -hmm. And it's so good. I Thank loved you. It. <laughs> I love I love that you love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I totally watched it. Yeah, it's out now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what's your songwriting process look like? You're an incredible songwriter. I love all of your songs. Thank you. What's it look like when you're sitting down to write a song? Yeah, so something that's been kind of cool in this, this past season, this last year, I got to teach a songwriting course at the college that I graduated from. And so I've learned that when you have an opportunity to teach, you also learn a lot about yourself in the process. And so when I was sitting here telling these college students how to write a song it kind of made me re-identify with how I write and I realized I don't really have a process I should figure out what works best for me and so this is kind of a fresher answer I probably wouldn't have answered this the same way six months ago but um, lately I've been writing a lot with my friend Aaron um, basically the, the my new song that just came out and most of the songs for the rest of this season for the next few months are songs I wrote with Aaron I'm with my friend Ace as well. And what we'll do is we'll just hang out in my room in my studio. He'll grab a guitar, I'll grab a guitar or something, and we'll just kind of jam and, and kind of find something that we connect with. Usually Aaron will ask me, like, what's the vibe today? And I'll be like, I want to write a, like, I'll pull up like a Post Malone song. Like, I like the song, this Post Malone Doja Cat song. Let's just do a song like this. All right, cool. And we'll just start cooking. And the way I like to write, which I find isn't always how other artists like to do it, is I like to build out most of the beat or instrumental first before I even start writing melodies or even like think of a concept. Um, I actually, I kind of envy how some artists can come in and be like, I want to write this song. Here's the hook idea I have. Like, I, I just don't really write like that. So for me, short answer, I basically build out a skeleton of the whole song and then we'll start finding melodies that work and then we'll think of the concept and then we'll write the lyrics usually start with the chorus then we hit the verses and then we hit the bridge okay how long does it take you to then have a finished product produce the whole thing out uh start to finish i would say we could knock a song out in a day other times it takes like two weeks so it just depends i will say that we wrote the four songs that you will hear 
uh, in the first f- like five months of this year, we wrote them all within probably three weeks. So it just it just depends how we're feeling. And it's so good to f- write with friends. Totally. Like I feel like you already have that connection, so then it can go so much faster because they are on the same level as you. Totally. Okay, let's talk about happy now. I broke up with depression and I wrote a song about it. So that's a song that you sort of started pushing again, even though when was it released? Like happy now. I think I put out in early 2022. Okay. Maybe fact check me on that, but I think it, yeah, it was at least a year ago, if not like a year and a half ago. Okay. Post pandemic though, for sure. And then you started sort of re-promoting it, um, with the new following that you have. So why did you decide to re-push that song? Why is it important to you? Yeah. Um, well originally I wrote happy now it's about, uh, breaking up with depression. Um, so many people that I know in my life, so many people, you know, out there, I know struggle with mental health and, um, I just, I got to a point in my life where I was just really fed up and frustrated with um, letting something that, that happened either chemically or situationally affect how I saw things. And I just, I was like, I'm done with this. Obviously there's still days that come and go that, that can be harder than others, but I wanted to write a song that was just kind of empowering people to realize like you can take control a lot more than you realize. Maybe it doesn't solve the whole issue, but I wanted to talk about how this isn't, um, it's great to, to, um, to share our stories. That's the first part and admitting you have trouble. That's the first part, but not to just sit there and be like, yeah, I'm depressed on me too. Like, let's, you know, let's encourage each other, but really be like, okay, that's the first part. Let's, let's overcome this together. Let's do our best to not let that, um, hinder us from doing what we're created to do. So obviously that's easier said than done, but that's kind of where this song started. And so when I came on to the voice, I knew that my platform was going to be a lot higher and a lot bigger than it had been in the past. And, I can't tell you like how blown away I was. It, it brought me a new sense of purpose hearing people's responses. Um, fans of the show that became fans of me through the show. When I started promoting Happy Now, I had probably a half a dozen, if not more, people literally DM me saying, "You saved my life." Like I was going to kill myself until I heard that song. Mm-hmm. And it's like it makes me, it makes me want to cry right now just thinking about. It just empowered me. Like it reminded me like I'm not just making music. Cause I'm created to make music. I'm not just making music to support my family. Like I'm making music to literally save people's lives. Mm-hmm. And so we wanted to promote happy now because it has a good message. But I think when I promoted it, I didn't even realize the, the amount of power the song had. So I'm, I'm really grateful. Yeah. And I think opening yourself up like that always like creates a p- safe place for people to come to you and talk to you. Totally. And you're like the perfect person to talk to because you're so sweet and like you just are a good person and you're gonna help people and i think with music or just um life you're helping people i'm called to so much more than how i might feel in this moment of pain and so i wrote my song happy now singles are sort of the new way to release music um you've released a lot of singles do you think that you want to create an album in the future are you more single focused what's Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. I have a lot of singles coming and maybe a bigger project coming also. Leaving us wondering. Yes. <laughs> a lot of good music. Yeah. A lot of good music coming. Do you ever think about, like, there's a whole social media to music now, like TikTok. Is there like a TikTok moment within a song and the songs that you're creating? A lot of people make like transition sounds or like a dance Man, thing. Man, I hope so. Yeah. This new song, hopefully it's popping off on TikTok right now. You should go check. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have some really fun ideas for several of the songs. One that just came out and then um, just for a couple of the m- more that we're releasing in the next couple months, um, some really fun ideas for TikTok. And um, yeah, I, it's such a crazy world because you could have the best song in the world and push it on on online and you know maybe it doesn't do as well as you'd like but then you might make some silly video and it blows up so we have goals and we have ideas and we're just hoping that they'll catch that's that's the goal of everything like you can make a trend and then it just flops or it completely blows up it's a whole different world we're living in with music so wow you're great at that so i'm I'm trying to learn from you Uh, i'm okay (laughs) at it yeah it's it's a lot trying to like because you want to just be a musician and have it like music focused but TikTok created a whole different realm of what music looks like and how it's heard. I th- I find a lot of my music through TikTok. Like it's crazy. It's yeah. creating. It's like a whole. 
people don't need labels anymore. They just blow up on TikTok, and it's crazy. It's cool, but it's also like now everyone's scrambling that's used to the old template because it's like yeah. how the heck is this happening and i think labels are also like looking to sign artists who already have a big platform like totally. that's the thing now totally. instead of like you have great music it's yeah. like do you have the followers yeah so now the goal is like build a following on tiktok mm-hmm. and then write good songs yeah. which is so bizarre to me because i've been it so is. focused on writing good songs yeah. or trying to so now i'm trying to catch up with tiktok because that's totally foreign to me it's foreign to me too. And oh I've been gosh. doing it for a few years. <laughs> no, because you can have a following and your views are still at a standstill. True. I mean, I have, I think like 300,000 followers. I can post a video and it gets like a thousand views. It's crazy. I don't know. Which, it. yeah, it's frustrating. And it's like, how does it all work? Yeah. It's, it's just a crazy world. But I did hear that TikTok might be shutting down again. Really? And I don't know. What's the next big thing? I, Okay. I love YouTube shorts. Okay. I've heard that that is, could be the next big thing. Yes. I hope that it's the next big thing because YouTube is really good to their creators and starting in February, they're starting to pay monetize really? YouTube shorts. Yeah. Cool. So I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated on how Heck that yeah, is. Please. Yeah. But so right now just long form videos are monetized and then shorts, you can get a bonus every month. Got it. If you're posting Similar them. to Instagram reels. Yes, Got exactly. It. Cool. Um, but YouTube shorts, like they just have a great community. They do like parties. They give you the awards, which is like so cool. So cool. Yeah. yeah. So I really like YouTube. I think they're, they actually care about their creators. So I'm hoping that's the next big thing that it would move into YouTube. Cool. Yeah. If TikTok gets canceled, that's wild. be on YouTube shorts. Yeah. We're going to yeah. do that. Yeah. YouTube shorts. Here we come. This question is juicy. Okay. Favorite and least favorite song that you've released. That I've released. Um, I'm going to say Love and Look Easy is my favorite. That's the song that just came out um, because it's it's the newest chapter of my life and I'm really proud of it. Least favorite song. Oh my gosh. Okay. Can I, answer, can I say a few and why? Yeah. Okay. I love that you have a few. <laughs> okay. Well, there's different reasons. Okay. I have a song called Moonlight and it probably it's your most streamed on spotify it's probably my most streamed song on spotify yeah. it did really well it still does really well after five years every time i've tried to get out of doing it at a show we get called out for an encore to do that song i cannot escape the song mm-hmm. i don't like it i don't like the song i remember making it and i was like oh this song's cool but it's not really like me mm-hmm. and people like it mm-hmm. so i don't want to say that's my least favorite song but i just wanted to share that that little tidbit because i think that is really funny that it's like one of my most favorited songs by people that like my music and I don't like the song. Mm-hmm. Um, Trust Issues. Okay. Probably haven't heard of it. Most people have it. I have. You have? Yeah. I thought it was a great song, but it flopped super hard. So okay. in that capacity, that uh-huh. would be in the bottom bottom three. The third and final one, um, another crowd favorite is called Magazine Girls. Um, these are just old era songs that mm-hmm. I didn't know how to produce music yet when I made them. And... I've considered taking them off, but they just perform so well that I, I just, I'm torn. Yeah. I have a song like that. Um, realized I don't need you. I liked it when I released it, mm. but then we were talking about TikTok. A TikTok trend happened with that thing that kind of ruined the song for me. No. Like this like cringy TikTok thing happened and I'm not going to like say what it was because okay. I love everybody on TikTok. Okay. Right. But something happened and it ruined the song for me. I was like, no oh, way. no, not, now this song is cringy to me and it's my most streamed. So I'm like, Dang. yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just like a song can get ruined for you, but your fans love it. So you're like, OK, I, I love fine. it, too. How long did it take for you to solidify your sound? You say like those songs that you didn't like was it towards the beginning? I don't know if I have solidified my sound. Okay. Um, I just had an opportunity to present some demos to somebody. And after I showed them, they were like, the first one's really cool, but it sounds a lot different than the second one. And Mm. that one doesn't sound, I'm like, dang, that's true. And so I haven't yet solidified my sound as far as genre, but I have solidified what I like and what I don't like. Mm -hmm. And so in that capacity, I think it's taken me the last three, four years of like creating and starting to produce my own music to kind of figure out um, what types of sounds I really like and what sounds I don't like. Do you have to be like one specific thing though? Like if you're a pop artist, you have to always create the same kind of song. Like 
sometimes it's good for an artist like one album is pop one album is pushing right. more rock one right. album is r&b whatever right. i wonder like with the people that you're meeting are they looking for you to be that one thing right that they can i grasp? mean you look at people like post malone who like he's created this world of like pop and hip-hop that's like collided so aggressively that like he can do whatever he wants but i also think that when you're a new artist that nobody really knows about like you kind of need to have a sound that they like know it's you Mm -hmm. but to answer your question no i don't feel like we have to be in one specific genre or box but i think when you're talking to labels and people like that they're looking to be able to like put a a, some type of title on you to know like what they're getting involved with Mm -hmm. so i don't think i'll ever be able to like be one specific thing but i think for that's for better for worse i think yeah, I think as an artist, you're always going to evolve and change right. what your sound is. And so it's you don't want to be boxed in by what you started as. Totally. What instruments do you play? Started on ukulele and clarinet. Then I moved to alto sax and baritone sax and guitar. Um, then I moved to bass and drums. And then I did piano in college. That's it. And voice. So, so the question is, what instruments don't you play? I don't play trumpet or violin or any of the brass, other brass. Things that really don't matter. That much. <laughs> <laughs> so how many of those instruments come out in your songs then? Um, on the songs you'll hear this year, I've played bass, guitar, um, or Aaron played guitar, but I, bass, guitar, piano. That's about it. I program everything else. Everything else is fake. I'd like to. I'd like to hear you play like something wild on one of your tracks. Like that would be sick. Yeah. I like definitely. A trumpet. That would be fire. I did have a trumpet on one song, but I didn't play it. Come on. So, I don't know how to play trumpet. Oh, I thought trumpet was one of. No. There was a long list. I had, it was, to, I yeah, had to remember. Yeah. I wish yeah. I played trumpet. Trumpet's probably the one cool instrument that I never learned how to play. Okay. Or trombone or something. That'd be cool. You gotta check that off the list. I should. So, are you classically trained or? Why, yeah. did you, why do you know all those instruments? Uh, I'm not classically trained in anything necessarily but voice. I did voice in college um, and I had to pass a piano proficiency in college. So I learned how to read to a point, but I'm not, I'm not a piano player, but I can, I can play it, but I'm not like a pianist. Um, everything else was just like school band and stuff. So nothing, I'm, I'm not extremely gifted in any of them at this point. I've just learned them all well enough to be able to make good music with it. And then I let better people play them yeah. live. <laughs> um, you're a father and I'm a, a father. husband. I'm a dad Yeah, and a husband. How do you make time to like create music, have a time and space to create music? Yeah, it's hard, mm. especially um, prior to doing music full time. I was in photo and video production. And so it's similar in that my wife's a photographer. Uh, it's it's similar in that we worked from home then. We work from home now. Like now I'm just making music. My wife's doing content stuff before we were just producing videos and photos for companies and stuff. So it's obviously I'm focusing on music now, which is way more exciting for me because that's what I want to do. But it's it's still the same feeling as it was you know a year or two ago when we were doing video stuff. And it's just that you have to be super, super intentional. And I think this is for anyone who works at home. You work at home. Like when you your office is also where you eat and sleep, it's really hard to stop working or to start working depending on where you're where you're at and what deadlines you have to accomplish. Mm-hmm. So factoring in a spouse and kids, it can be really detrimental to your family dynamic if you aren't intentional with your calendar. And so something I preach to everyone is like color code and keep your calendars organized. Um, my pastor said once, he said, you don't want your schedule to look like who you are. You want it to look like who you want to become. And so my calendar is always, and I, I've done better in the past. Now things are just crazy because I'm trying to f- figure out what life is right now with the whole music thing. But I've always made a goal to like make my calendar reflect my goals instead of just like day to day. Um, and that includes, you know, making sure that I'm not booked out every single day for 12 hours, 14 hours and making sure that there's time for me to be with my kids. And so, um, my kids are in and out of my studio every day. Like I I will never go more than like one or two hours, probably maybe three without an interruption in some capacity, but it's, it's allowed because I think that it's so important, especially being such young parents and being in the season of our lives where all we're doing is just grinding to be able to build our careers. Like it, it's so important that we don't neglect you know the the young years of our kids that we'll never get back so 
Um, it's been really hard. It's been really challenging. We don't sleep a lot, but we make sure that we have family time with the kids. I have time with my wife. Um, and then obviously, you know, I, I get to work when I can. So. There was this video coffee live stripped yeah. on your YouTube. Yeah. And at the very beginning of the video, like one of your kids is playing or something yeah. in the background. And I just thought that was so cute and like so real, like, like you're trying to record something, but totally. they're playing and it's that's just, just going to happen. I was in a session last night with a friend and we were trying to record her vocals and my kids are screaming in the background. She's like, keep it in there. I love it. Yeah, it's it's cute. Just, it, it is. That's just the reality of my house. Yeah. Do you schedule out creative time then? Like I'm going to write these hours because sometimes the creative mind like just will happen. You can't really schedule that out. So yeah, it's hard now that I've been writing with, like I mentioned, I'm writing with my friend Aaron. I, we ha I'll be like, Hey, I'm going to go to the gym and then we're going to, we're going to write for six hours and out of those six hours. Yeah. It's it, you're right. Like sometimes some sessions just aren't as, as productive as others. Um, but yeah, you never know. I just, we keep it pretty flex. So I went to one of your shows in Arizona. Sick. Yeah. It was at Crescent Ballroom. Heck yeah. It was a really fun show. Yeah. A funny story about that show. Actually, one of the things you said during the show, you're like, everyone jump. So I started jumping and I didn't know my keys fell out of my purse. Oh no. And I went all the way home and because someone else was driving me yeah. and I couldn't get into my apartment no. and I had to drive back. So I'm sorry that I yeah, did that to you. You were incredible. <laughs> the experience that I had at the show is very <laughs> stressful because I didn't have my keys. I had to pay for new keys. It was Dang. Thing, but so if you come to my show, you'll probably have to buy new keys. But she said it was incredible. So. It, it was. Just keep your keys secure. Make sure your purse is zipped up or whatever okay. so they're not flying That's a good out note. When, when everyone's dancing. Um, but note. you were a great performer. Thank you. Like I really enjoyed the show. So that was years ago. That was probably like four or five yeah. years ago maybe. Um, how did you get comfortable performing? Were you always a comfortable performer? Yeah. Um, I'm still not really a comfortable performer, honestly. Mm. And so like being on the sh doing the voice and like doing things where I'm like under the public eye and like having to move correctly, like I don't look it, but I'm freaking out. Um, I don't have stage fright, but I definitely, I don't, I don't move well. And so I appreciate you saying that. I think a lot of it comes from, I just get as excited as I can. And I just kind of, I want to connect with my fans and get crazy. And so everything else just kind of follows suit. But like, believe it or not, I actually have a lot of anxiety when it comes to body movement for sure. Yeah. You wouldn't show it Good. at all. Good. Yeah. You were on the voice. Mm -hmm. If, if you didn't know, I was on the voice. He was on the voice. Um, second place. Congratulations. Thank incredible. You. you were amazing on the voice. We talked about stage, right? You don't look scared at all. You look incredible. So the first audition, blind auditions, mm -hmm. you had a guitar with you. Yeah. And a lot of people will say that they play guitar as like a safety blanket, like to have something in front of them. Yeah, totally. Is that true for you as well? Is that why you picked it? Um, it depends. Funny enough, I actually didn't want to play guitar for the audition. They, they, they liked how I was playing it because I made a demo for them prior to coming on. I was like, hey, this is how I want to do the song. And they're like, was that you playing guitar? I was like, yeah. They're like, you should play. I was like, well, I don't really want to because I want to focus on my voice. And they're like, I think that they'll be able to tell that someone else is playing. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to play guitar. But they convinced me to. And, but I will say it definitely is a safety blanket um, for certain types of songs. I'd say for like church music, because I, I, I play a lot at my church, that type of environment, I prefer to play a guitar. But if I'm like running around, hyping the crowd up, I don't like having like another thing to worry about. So I feel like when you're running around, at least for myself, I run out of breath. So yeah. like having to either play piano or play guitar, like standing still is so much better. Yeah, that's true. That's do, true. You, do you have like incredible breath control or how are you running around? If I was the performer show right now, I would probably throw up because I'm not in shape right now. But yeah, after like, yeah, after doing shows for a couple of months, like, yeah, you could run marathons and be fun. Still sing. Were you in shape on the show? I, I was, but the, the songs are so short. Like it's different okay, yeah. than like a 15 song set. Like you're singing like a minute and a half. That's it. I didn't like, I comprehend that watching. Yeah. I like think it's the whole song. Yeah. So it was, it was probably the easiest uh, musically. It was probably like the easiest situation because we practiced one song yeah. for weeks and then we'd, or for a week and then we'd do that one song. But yeah, it's a little bit easier physically than real shows, but true. So real shows are really difficult. Yeah. I can't wait to do one. It's yeah. been a long, long time. Yeah. The live show. Go watch it. Go watch it. <laughs> so you made 
every cover song your own on the show that was like my favorite part is like i'd seen you live i'd listened to your music and you were the same on the show as you are with your music that you've released original music so how did you make each arrangement yeah um i was definitely nervous coming on the show because i'm not a cover guy like i've never i've just i've always just wanted to make my own stuff and so going on the show i was nervous that they were gonna make me do it a certain way and they were the most like empowering and like enabling people i was i was able to like fly and do whatever i wanted a lot of the stuff you heard uh live were was pre-recorded in my hotel room like if you heard like acoustic guitars in the tracks like i did a post malone song for i think my third performance and the acoustic guitar in the tracks i recorded by like balancing a microphone on my desk in my hotel the night before like like they were so down with me like to do whatever i wanted to do um and so it was it was an awesome experience like they really um, and working with Blake Shelton, like he was so excited by what I brought to the table that it made me a better artist because I was like, I was so, like I said, enabled to, to do those things. I was shocked. I didn't know that they're going to give me so much creative control. Yeah. Well, and it showed and now people know the artist that you are because your creativity shine through the show i'm really thankful for that for yeah. sure yeah. you had really good song choices too you picked very like relevant songs um golden hour was like trending at the yeah, time that was big so were you like going through like okay what's popular were they giving you suggestions or how did that work yeah there's a little bit of uh, like a political side to the song choice that i won't get into but um for the most part like golden hour specifically i had sent them to them and i was like i'd love to do this song eventually mm -hmm. Um, so there were songs that I, that, honestly, that was the one that I like, I sent to them. I was like, this song would be perfect. Um, but yeah, they did give me a lot of like trendy songs. I did the, the Joji song glimpse of us, which was honestly probably the hardest and my least favorite performance, but it did well. And, um, doing a post Malone song or Justin Bieber song. Yeah. So they, they definitely gave me some, um, more relevant stuff, but, um, that posed its own challenge because I didn't want to be compared to another male pop artist. So I, that's why that's a big reason as to why I flipped the song and made it different too. Yeah. Yeah. You did a good job. It Thank felt you. like your song. Cool. What was your favorite performance that you did? I'd say musically, I had the most fun on the post Malone um, better now. Um, just cause it, it felt more like something I would do at one of my shows. Um, I really liked doing golden hour because I was able to kind of do a little bit more of that rappier singing stuff, which I do in my own music. Um, I almost threw up during that performance. Fun fact. Really? Yes. What happened there? Um, catering, the catering <laughs> made my stomach hurt really bad and I was freaking out and I was about to go on stage and the, the, um, stage manager was like are you okay i'm like yeah i can't remember the words and so i made him like google the words and i'm like i was forgetting the words my stomach hurt i had to go to the bathroom i was like i'm going to die and i get up there and i literally um there was a moment where i walked down the stairs of the set and i was supposed to hold this big belty you note, know, and i literally cut the note short and walked down the stairs you would have never known but like my performance was a lot different because i was like i was going to either throw up or pass out like a hundred percent did you after the show no I, I, as okay. soon as the show was done, I like could breathe again yeah. and it subsided, but I shouldn't, I, I ate two portions of the food. I should have only eaten one. It was my fault. But yeah, that's my worst nightmare. It was horrible. It's it was probably, almost horrible. It's probably the food mixed with nerves. Yeah. It's like it upset your stomach a little, but then the nerves just like 100%. escalated it. I like had to pee so bad, but like I didn't have to pee. It was like one of those things. I was yeah. like, there's something wrong with my body, but there's nothing wrong. It was one of those situations, yeah. but so how do you handle nerves on the show? I saw, I was watching one of your vlogs and you said you like set time before to like calm yourself down yeah. and like pray and meditate. Yeah. So is that something that you kept doing every episode or how'd you handle it? Yeah. It got easier too towards the finale. Like at that point we were just like all friends and just having fun. So like it wasn't as scary, but like the first few weeks of live shows where there's like 13 of us and three or four go home each week, like that was so hard. Cause it's like, everyone's good. And it was this weird dynamic too of like, I, I didn't, I, by the time I got to the lives, I didn't really necessarily, I don't want to say I didn't care. I was very excited. But like, if I would have went home the first day of the lives, I wouldn't have been like super heartbroken just because it was such a fun opportunity. Um, so the nerves weren't as gnarly, but they were still like, it was more the nervousness of like, I don't know what the outcome is. It's the nervousness of there's so many cameras on me. There's millions of people judging me literally. <laughs> not even just for how I look or how I sound, but like how I move, like every little tiny thing, there's four megastar coaches about to tell me how I did. Like there's so many things 
Um, and there is not even one little inch for error. So that was where the nervousness came from. It wasn't like a, um, a nervousness of like sounding good. It was a nervousness of like all of it combined. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I would usually take five to 10 minutes at some point within like the, the last few hours before the show, just to like sit by myself. Um, I do like jumping jacks and push ups and vocal warm ups. Those are like my big three things I do. Does it get you out of breath before you go on stage? You should. It's like a warm up. Okay. Because then your 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 cardio is ready to go. Okay. Yeah. I'll take notes. It's actually a huge thing. Like a huge okay. thing for me. Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh huh. Get yourself out of breath before you go on stage. I mean, catch your breath, but get yourself out of breath, recover, and then go on stage. Yeah. And then what's going on in your head when you're on stage? The last maybe five performances, I had a really cool moment with another contestant. Uh, another two contestants and we were standing um, on deck about to go on stage the coaches are right here or actually they walked past us we said hi to them we're like this is so cool it's so fun and i was talking to them the other contestants and i was like we got to soak this in guys because literally in three four weeks or even by tomorrow one of us could be home two of us could be home like let's soak in every moment and so i remember vividly it was a golden hour performance and then every performance after that i was standing on stage crowd screaming there's smoke everywhere and they're counting counting down in my ears when we're live and i'm just i, I smiled and i was just like this is so cool and so I, the moments before performing i remember the last like five or six performances were like really special and nostalgic for me because it was like i want to remember this forever and so it was it was like a peaceful moment it was really cool that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that you were able to be present. A lot of times, like, if I'm performing, it's like, what's it for dinner? By. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not thinking about it anymore. Yeah. I, I didn't want to miss it because I'll never do that again. Yeah. Is it one of those things where like you're nervous and then you step on stage and you're present and you're there and you're not nervous anymore? Yeah. Certain songs is like a song, like as long as I get to this chorus, I'll be fine. And other songs, it's like the whole time I'm freaking out. It just depended on the song too because yeah. they're not my songs. So it was never really comfortable like to sing someone else's song. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, once you hit the stage, it's the nerves go away a bit. Yeah. Well, in the finale, you did a worship song, which is like very in your realm since you're a worship leader. Did that feel more comfortable or was that nerve more nerve wracking? Yeah, that was the most comfortable performance. Okay. Vocally, it wasn't as challenging and it wasn't that, that was the least about me. Um, so it was just a lot easier to not focus on me and focus on what I was doing. But um, yeah, that's a good point. That one in God's country weren't weren't nerve wracking at all. Those were just fun. Yeah, and I feel like with you as Blake, like you had that dynamic, like to not be nervous, and you were just playing off of each other. He was other. my friend. Yeah. yeah, he was a good friend to me. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. How do you keep your voice healthy when you're performing like every single night, rehearsals every night? How do you keep it healthy? I don't think I've ever been as healthy as I was when I was on the show because you don't realize, or at least I didn't realize. Maybe everyone else in the world knows this, but your your voice is just another muscle. So if you go for a run every day, like you're going to be able to run more the next day and the next day and the next day. And so I didn't realize singing, I, I hit notes on the show that I'd never even thought I could hit before. I, I probably raised my range by like a step and a half, like significant. Um, and it was just because we were singing every day and I was working out every day. That's literally, so I, I would have thought I would be men, uh, mentally and vocally exhausted, but I was just more, more strong every day. So that was kind of cool. Have you continued that practice nope. then? <laughs> <laughs> I came home like, I'm going to take a break for a couple of weeks. And now I, I lost a little bit of my strength. So I'm, okay. I'm gaining it back now. We'll I've been back. sick because it's been so cold and rainy. Yes. Um, but yeah, the, it's def- it was groundbreaking though for me because I didn't realize like, wow, singing 30 to 45 minutes a day every day, like actually will change your life. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I did. so I sing in front of a camera every day and I'll like lose my voice hmm. in a second or even talking for too long i lose my voice so interesting do you do like loss and lozenges or lozenges. tea lozenges yeah i said that wrong yeah <laughs> i do tea I, honestly for me the big thing is just warming up like a good healthy warm-up every day is what will sometimes that's all i'll do is just a warm-up yeah. that, that's that's kind of what keeps my voice healthy yeah and i'll rest vocal rest like if i'm if my voice hurts i had a mask on the show because we had to wear like face shields and stuff for covid stuff mm-hmm. um and i had tape across the front that said vocal rest and i just put that on whenever Sorry. i didn't want to talk to people or when i was vocally resting <laughs> yeah sometimes both <laughs> and um that made a big difference too yeah resting your voice yeah was it is it more nerve-wracking performing live in front of an audience just a normal show or on tv um on TV. I mean, there's nothing compares mm-hmm. to like, like I said, like all the little things that go into it mm-hmm. and it's a competition. Like there's so much on the line. Um, 
but it's easier physically because you're like I said, you're singing for a minute versus singing for an hour and a half or whatever. So yeah, it's got to be intimidating. Yeah. Like because there's not just the judges, but there's a crowd there too. Yeah. yeah, I had home turf advantage though. I probably had like five to fifteen people every week for the live shows that were from like that came for me. Okay, like my wife, my mom and dad, and like uncles and aunts came a couple times. So like the crowd chanting my name a lot of those people i didn't know but it was started by my friends so it definitely and the crowd didn't intimidate me because a lot uh, I, there was so much love could you see them when yeah. you're performing mm-hmm. okay, a couple times good. when i look off the stage and smile it was because I, I found my wife Aww. almost everyone yeah that's awesome yeah so it's easy sometimes to get boxed in by the thing that gives you your start yeah um for some people that's like social media for you maybe it's the voice how do you see yourself um not getting boxed in by the thing that gave you your start. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, she's really good at this. You're good, you're good at this. Thanks. Um, you're my second interview ever. Whoa, you're a natural. So, oh no, I'm I'm like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous, but yeah, I you're think doing this great. Will, this will be good. Yeah. Um, I guess I would just say for me, um, I was really me and my team are really strategic on how we approached, um coming out of the voice and I said this on Instagram live a lot while I was on the voice and let's be honest when you're on a show like that like you have a lot more attention than when you come off because then they a lot of the voice fans are now focusing on next season which is totally fine I get it but one thing I did was I wanted to make a I wanted to make it clear to my fans um while I was on the show that like I care about them and not like I'm gonna be best friends with every single fan because it's just impossible but like the music and the content I put out is for them. And so whatever we do after the show, I want them to know like I'm making it for them. And I, I, it means a lot when you watch this stuff and when you listen to this stuff and when you buy my merch and support me, cause like it's, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for my family, you know? Um, and so that's been the big thing for me is like making sure that I'm building a relationship with the people that vibe with me and my, or, or my fans, I guess. Um, and secondly, just, doing good stuff, making good music. So those are my two kind of my two goals is like connect with my audience and make content that's worthy of people liking it. Um, outside of that, it's just, I mean, I, I honor the voice in the process and it was incredible opportunity. I made a lot of friends behind the scenes and on the stage. Um, but detaching from the voice is a big part of it too. As, as, as hard as it is, it is an amazing part of my story, but, um, that's not who I am anymore. I'm an artist that came from there and and has moved on from there. So those are kind of the, I guess the three pieces of, of that answer. Yeah. I think you were an artist on the show. I mean, Hmm. we already kind of talked about this, but your artistry showed through the way that you arranged your cover songs. So people, if they liked those, they're going to like your original music. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. And they're gonna like your new song. They, I bet you love my new song already. <laughs> you should comment in the comments how much you love my song. Yeah. And how great she is at interviewing. Those are the two things you should comment. Thanks. Yeah. No hate. Yeah. Yeah. No hate. Speaking of hate, actually. Oh. I I wasn't gonna ask this, but I'm thinking of it. How do you handle hate? Do you get any criticism? I feel like everyone loves mm-hmm. you, but how would you maybe recommend if you don't get hate, people yeah. handle that? Um, how would I recommend handling it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or how do you handle it if you get any? Um, don't feed into it. Mm. There, it's just it, people that are hating are unhappy or they're jealous of you. So like by you biting back, it's just showing that they got what they wanted or you made them even more unhappy. <laughs> so it's like, why, what's the point? Um, I did get some hate on the show. Not a lot. I honestly was pretty shocked by how supportive and loving people were towards me um but everyone gets hate and it, like it is what it is but yeah like just don't feed into it it's not worth it um i was listening to a podcast years ago and it always stuck with me someone said that it, that it was this this influential artist and, and he was saying he, he'd scroll through his comments and it, you know hundreds of people just encouraging and lo- you know loving on his stuff and then he'd see the one mean con- comment and it would ruin his day and he's like why is it that i'll have hundreds of people that that vibe with me, that love me, support my stuff. And then there's one unhappy person. How does that ruin my day? Like, how does that make me then lash out at my friend or my wife or my husband or whatever? And it's just, it was a good point. It's like, if I got a math test and I got 99%, I'd be hyped. So why am I sad if I had 1% of my pop of my following be rude, you know? So it is what it is. I dealt with it actually this week. Some people being rude. I'm like, why is this ruining my day? Like there's so many amazing supportive people on my platform that there's, there's, 
there's no room for this. We have to stay unoffendable. If we're going to be influential people, we have to be unoffendable. So, yeah, no, that's a good answer. I really like that. Is the goal to be signed by a label or stay independent? Um, short answer. I just want to provide for my family and inspire people. So for me with my beliefs, I trust God. So I'm I'm not going to make any decision without feeling peace in my heart. Um, that would come from, from God. So, I, right now, I don't have an answer for that. We're exploring both options. We have some really awesome opportunities on both sides. So right now, we're just kind of seeing which one looks best. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for whatever. We'll see what happens. And you're doing great right now on your own. Thank you. And building it. Yeah. If you can build something alone and like have a good team around you, which I think you do, you can do what a label will do for you. Yeah. Go by yourself. Totally. And you are, you're like so self-sufficient producer. Um, you talked about your wife and you being content. Um, or did you work for weddings? You did video stuff. Yeah, right? I, I did videos. For, I had two businesses. One handled like the wedding stuff and it was super fun and really unlocked a lot of my creative side and really helped me get in touch with like more sensitive, like feminine side of myself too. And like learning like how to be sensitive and aware of people's feelings and how to evoke emotion in film. Um, and then the other side was <laughs> the far opposite. I worked in like corporate advertising. So like working with brands and corporations on the fashion world, but then also on like the not so fashiony, like more stuffy side. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely got well-rounded on the content creation side. So. That, that's really interesting that you worked in those two fields though, because like video is obviously going to translate into music totally. and then you worked in advertising. That's a huge part of music. Yeah. So you've worked in both those realms that will now feed into promoting your music. Storytelling. That's all it is. Yeah. Connecting with people. Yeah. How do you see yourself promoting the next songs and the albums and using those tools to promote them? I'm always going to use video, um, like I said, to storytell. Um, I'm really excited in these next few months, in these next couple of years even, um, building more on the um, comedy entertainment world and doing more like content, even like larger scale content. Um, so I'm not sure how I'm going to tie it in quite yet to my songs, but I thought I'd say that because I'm really excited. I'm going to be, be, be tapping in even more to the video creation stuff coming up soon. Is something in the works or you're just dreaming early stages yeah okay yeah because you you have a great personality and you're funny i i loved the videos that you do with your kids mm. like on a green screen yeah. doing like little things to they're just funny and they're cute my and kids they, are so funny yeah they're adorable is that sort of the realm that you're heading in i'm not sure okay. i'm not sure yet we're gonna we're gonna wait and see and it's gonna be great and hilarious okay so i watch your vlogs your vlogs are really cool. fun. I like how fast paced they are. Yeah. Um, is a goal of yours to like be a YouTuber or are the vlogs just its own thing? I've always like ever since maybe it doesn't matter for like the last like five, six years, I've tried vlogging multiple times. I've, I've had multiple channels and I just, I can never stay consistent, but I think I'm finally in a season of my life where like I'm dedicating everything to music and content creation to where like, I think this is finally a season of my life where I can be consistent and I'm, I mean, we're posting every week on YouTube now. Um, so yeah, it, it, I wouldn't call myself a, I, I wouldn't say I'd want to be a YouTuber, but I would love to build my YouTube platform to again, storytell and entertain people. Um, a lot of different products and a lot of different types of video, but, um, I think my YouTube page is going to have a lot of different sources of entertainment for people coming up soon. I think part of you, you're not just a musician, you're a personality and people want to know more about you yeah. to listen to your music. So yeah. doing the comedy stuff and the vlogs is, is really interesting for your fans. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I hope they like it. <laughs> yeah, I think they will. I enjoy your vlogs. Thank you for watching them. That's awesome. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Especially, I mean, I think it's fun to see your family and who you are totally. when you're not a working musician. Like seeing this like polished musician is cool, right. but it's fun to see the real authentic you yeah i feel like a lot of artists that um like that i look up to they leave their personal life as mystery which i understand to a point but i've just always pondered and i have there's an artist that i've really been really been vibing with lately um toby wigway and he, he's a rapper and he includes his wife and his kids in everything and like one of his songs even says like if my kids and my wife can't come i'm not interested or something like that i forget how he says it but like it just made me realize and even prior to, to watching toby's stuff is like why aren't there more artists out there romanticizing the idea of a wife and a family? And it's just because we're in a world like where that's not that sexy, but like 
it, it can be like it's dope i'm so happy i have a i have a wife and kids and my life is amazing you know like why can't that be what we talk about and not even the, every song but like why can't we showcase how incredible life can be and how fulfilling it can be to be a provider of a family and a leader of a family and um so that's something that I would love to show even just in my vlogs is like as simple as me spending time with my kids and then going and writing a banger that people play in clubs. Like that's tight. Like to be able to do both of those things, people don't do that. So that's, that's a big, uh, a big reason too why I like to make content that's more behind the scenes. Yeah. And I think that's going to really reach people and spread a good message. Like marriage is good. Marriage totally. is fun. I'm married. Heck yeah. Do you got married pretty young, didn't you? Yeah. How old were you when you got married? Uh, I graduated college a month before. So I think I was like 20. 21 and you guys met in college mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i think it's incredible like that's such an incredible story that she's been through it all with all you. of it yeah. all of it yeah and are most of your songs inspired by love and her nope I'd a say lot of them are breakup songs a lot of them are breakup songs <laughs> and people ask like why well, do you write these songs like you look happily married it's like i am happily married but a lot of people aren't happily married and i like to write songs that make people feel something um but yeah, I'd say a lot of the cute, lovey ones are obviously inspired by my wife. But um, yeah, I like to write songs. I mean, you don't expect an author to write books about their life all the time. Like there's nonfiction and there's fiction. And I like to kind of teeter between nonfiction and fiction. So yeah, that's good. Do you get inspired by like watching movies or like sometimes you can get inspired by like your friends breakups or <laughs> yeah. things like that? Or is it just made up in your head? I think all of it. I think it's it just it's kind of in the moment what I'm feeling and what what mood I'm in. My wife is a huge songwriter too, so she's a huge part. Or at least she's a huge in my camp of songwriting. Like she co-writes almost all my songs. So it's really what me and or her are feeling in the moment is where a lot of the songs come from. Yeah, because I noticed she was a co-writer on Happy Now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so she's a co-writer on most of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I started adding her as a credited writer, but even before yeah. that, she was she was helping me with a lot of it, even just processing through emotions on a lot of those songs. But Happy Now was a big one. She helped me with that one a lot. That's really special. But my song Gemini, which was one of my favorite songs ever, um, she that was her. She was like, "You should write a song about like you're a Gemini, but but they don't they don't like that you're a Gemini and you think it's stupid or whatever." Like that was the concept. I'm like, "We should write a song about that." I'm a Gemini so, too. Are you really? Yeah. When's your birthday? Also think it's stupid. May twenty seventh. <laughs> nice. Happy. Yeah. Wait, no, not yet. Almost no. happy birthday in like four months. Yeah. When's your birthday? June twelfth. Oh, but yeah. you're a Gemini. I guess. Okay. I don't know how it all works. I don't either. Yeah. But we were like, "Oh, we should write a song about being a Gemini," and then I googled it. I'm like, "Oh, I'm a Gemini." So I guess I actually don't know. You could Google could be wrong. Am I a Gemini? Can you look it up? Google. Okay. We're going to Google it right now. This is, Im this is important. <laughs> Research. Yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was just May, but I really don't know how it works. I'm, my whole world's going to be shattered. I'm going to rewrite the song. Yeah. If I'm not. You're going to have to. All right. Uh, Gemini is May 21st to June 21st. We're Gemini. We did it. Two Gemini's. Oh, thank Gemini's goodness. are like it says they're like two faced and Heck yeah. <laughs> they're two faced girls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does it say about Gemini's? The mo okay, let's see. Um, playful and intellectually curious, Gemini is constantly juggling a variety of passions, hobbies, careers, and friend groups. Well <laughs> I mean social <laughs> I mean okay. come on. Okay. But <laughs> I'm trying to find the, the negatives here. There are no negatives. We're Gemini's. We're, yeah, <laughs> Gemini's are just perfect, Gemini's basically. Wrong. Yeah. Says, Moody, sarcastic, and impulsive are some bad traits. So well, those sound Moody. actually like good traits to me. So but it seems that there's more good traits. Yeah, so. makes yeah. sense. Well, are you introverted or extroverted? I'd say over the years I've become more introverted only okay. because I'm so tired of people yeah. <laughs> um, having three loud young kids and mm -hmm. not that I'm tired of my kids, but no. just the overstimulation of just noise. Yeah. Um, and I, I worked full time at a church for four years. And before that I was very, very involved and still am pretty dang involved at church. So like I'm just around people a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I've realized that my quiet time is like way more precious to me than ever. So I'd say I'm more introverted now. I, I get like refueled by myself or with my wife, whereas before I could be out all day, all all night and be mm. amazing so it's yeah. kind of changed okay what about you introverted really full all on the way yeah. interesting yeah i sometimes like i'll be so introverted though for too long i'm like i need to see people totally yeah but i really i refuel by being alone <laughs> cool yeah
quiet time is, is spare sometimes. Yeah. Especially for my wife. She's the real MVP. Because mm. I get to come out, get to hang out with you guys, do interview stuff. I get to go, you know, go build, build team build with my with my songwriters and stuff. But, like, my wife's the one with the kids. She's the one building the family when I'm out. So she's, mm. I would be nowhere without her. She's amazing. Shout out to Royale. Shout out to Royale. Yeah. If you're watching this, I love you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Thanks for allowing him to be here today. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> so the last question, this is a question I ask all of the people that I interview. Cool. What's a dream so big that it scares you? Oh. Big question. A dream big, so big that it scares me. Um, I've always dreamed of being able to be a multifaceted artist that influences the world in multiple ways. And that's a dream that scares me for multiple reasons. One, that's just a large goal <laughs> and I'm just a nobody that has a dream. So in that capacity, it scares me. Secondly, I think people that find success often take that success in exchange for, you know, at expense of their family or their marriage. So, um, having big dreams, it, you know, puts a big target on your back. It puts big risk on you. Um, so that's my big scary dream, but I'm staying grounded and focused and focusing on my marriage and my kids first and everything else will follow suit after that. Yeah. I heard this great thing. It's like, just take one step, just yeah. one step at a time, like keep going towards your goals, but just think of it as one step. Totally. 1% better and, every day. Yeah. Yep. And you'll get there. Yeah. And I think you're, you're definitely taking the right steps to get there. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for having today. me. Gemini's. Gemini. So Gemini. <laughs> so Gemini. Two faced. <laughs> and what were the positives? Uh, the positives were we were two faced and moody and impulsive. Those are negatives. Oh, I thought those were positives. Intellectually curious. Ooh, intellectually and juggle curious. Juggle too many things. That's juggle very us. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today on that note. Bye, guys. Um, yeah, listen to Bodhi's new song. Yeah, Socials. Love and Look Easy. Socials, Instagram is just Bodhi, B-O-D-I-E. Everything else is Bodhi Loves You, because I do. Hmm. Buy my merch. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all we got. Awesome. Tell your parents you love them. That's it. Okay, I'll call, I'll call her after this. Good. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.